I'm Rhett. And I'm Brandon. And we're, we're the, the House Dads. Dads. Because we're dads who sell houses. But we're also husbands, business owners, sports freaks, Christians. Friends, marketing nerds, TV show bingers, and so many more things. Like so many of you, we're just trying to do it all. And we're trying to do it well. And that's what we're here to talk about. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the House Dads podcast. In You're in store for a treat today. Super excited to have national champion, formal pro, former professional athlete, uh, great businessman, great family man, Ryan Schiff here today. Man, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm yeah, excited. Absolutely, man. I know I give you all that hype and stuff like that. And I think that sometimes, <laughs> you know, so I knew you from afar, watching you win a national championship in 09 and all that different stuff. Like, I remember watching all of this. And and so I got to meet you a couple months back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the reason initially that I was like, man, we got to have this guy on is because I appreciate, man, just your authenticity. You're like, hey, man, yeah, I've you know, accomplished a few things in life, but just down to earth guy. And uh, just want to talk business and life and stuff with you today. So, yeah. you know, I appreciate that. I hope I don't disappoint you. you. No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't. I think if anything. Pressure's on, buddy. I think if anything, that wasn't a disappointment. That was uh it spoke volumes about you, man. Well, I think so. Appreciate it. Glad to have you here. For yeah, sure. man, we are. We're pumped. And uh, as you can tell, we're the house dads. We've got a little theme here. We're dads. Um, so we wanted to kind of set the context in, in store so you can give everybody a little glimpse of what your life is like. So if you don't mind sharing a little bit about like your family dynamic, age of kids, how long you've been married, how you met, yeah. I'm giving you all these long questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take your time. Yeah. So, uh, so three kids. Um, Married my high school sweetheart. Doesn't nice. happen too often. No. So met my wife in high school or, you know, she's been after me since high school. So, <laughs> um, so we'll we, clip that to the yeah. she's the reacher. OK, so we met in high school and, uh, you know, we went to LSU together. Um, same same grade, too. So she's been with me every step of the way cool. um, through LSU, pro ball and beyond. So yeah. uh, three kids, eight, six a wild heathen at two and a half so uh um, <laughs> we're just talking about our kids age and man yeah so we're uh yeah we're, we're juggling work right kids my wife's running a business so um but she's she's been with me every step of the way That's through cool. through the ups and downs of the, awesome. the madness that we'll probably get into with baseball yeah very yeah. cool so how long have y'all been married now putting you on the spot again yeah uh, coming up 10 years this 10 years? uh december yeah come on man so i gotta nice. i gotta awesome. i gotta find something big to do huh? yeah for sure that 10 <laughs> yeah. years is a big one maybe uh i've seen some people they're they're like first anniversary they're like going out of the country and i'm like oh gosh you're peaking man save yeah. that for later <laughs> you do that for the 10 years. yeah yeah <laughs> I don't uh, know what we're gonna do. We're gonna find something cool. Yeah, well, that's cool. putting you on the spot there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you you married your your high school sweetheart. Got three kids. Where'd you go to school, or where'd you grow up? St. Paul. So okay. Co- Covington's home. I mean, we kind of moved around a couple different yeah. spots, but Covington's home for me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's not far from us. We're about an hour or so from from us. But um, now that we have the context, the stage set for your family, um, we want to hear about. It's a it's a vague and loaded question, but your journey, right? So uh, you went to LSU, you went to pro ball, but we'd love to hear kind of like the buildup of anything you think is worth mentioning about what got you to LSU, what mm-hmm. got you to the pros. Uh, but yeah, anything just kind of fill us in on, on your journey. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to figure out where to start. Yeah. Uh, okay, like, you came like, out of the womb. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like, right. So I, I remember my first birthday. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's you know I've never really, and we were talking about this a minute yeah. ago. You know I've never I've never really been a reflector and like yeah. reflected on mm-hmm. my career, which I I, I probably should because yeah, you, um, you know life happens fast and you move on. So, yeah. um, but no, I mean I, you know my my family's a sports family. So um, my uncle ran track at LSU. He's a really good track runner at LSU. Yeah. Uh, my other uncle was really good football player so he played football a little bit in college so we were always sports yeah. even on my mom's side of the family you know they, they were sports heavy too um so that was that was life so didn't grow up hunting or fishing or anything like mm-hmm. that it was all sports was well. yeah um so you know always playing in the street with my dad my dad was the big kid everybody would come knock on the door like hey can mr can mr craig play that's yeah. cool so um you know, had a very involved dad to, you know, help me get awesome. to to get to where I got to. So, um, growing up, we moved to a little country town, and um, you know, and that was fun. So, 
we actually moved the, my dad got transferred to Bogalusa, Louisiana. So okay, that was cool. a shot going from yeah. the city <laughs> For sure. to Bogalusa. Bogalusa. So, um, but it, it, but it was, it was great the, the time that we had there because yeah. mm-hmm. I got to experience a whole nother life that, right. you know, I yeah. didn't know I was a city kid. So yeah, right. got to become a little country boy, learn how to hunt and fish yeah. and, you know, be wild, get into trouble. So, yeah. and then we moved to Covington and, and, you know, Covington's home for me. Um, it's where I went to high school, met my wife. It's where my family lives. Both of our families live. So um, went to high school at St. Paul's, which was, it, it was a good challenge for me because I was always one of the better ones at sports coming up. Right. And then I, and I was always a smaller kid too, mm-hmm. but I was good. I was proportionate, like well built, yeah. yeah. but I was short. Yeah. So yeah. Um, when I got to St. Paul's, it was a small, the North Shore is a small community. Right. And um, and nobody really knew who I was coming out of Bogalusa, Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, if anything, I probably it was an uphill battle because I almost got cut from eighth grade team. Kid. Um, I was oh. the last kid to make it, and um, and the coach had to call me and my mom. Who my mom was there. I don't know why my mom was there, but called us up in the office or in the press box because he he wanted to keep me, but he wanted to find out what our dedication was because uh, some of the kids from that area that did make the team didn't last or they quit. Gotcha. So, yeah. Um, so that was step number one. Wow. And you know, I, I was a good player. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I really don't remember how good I was, but right. it was kind of had to prove myself cause I was the, the random kid who didn't go to all the little schools around exactly. there that you knew of. Yeah, yeah. So, um, was it always baseball? Or were you just kind of you know, an athlete I, who did everything? I, I played everything, um, but in high school, you know, I always thought I was going to be, going to be a football player. Yeah. I okay. love I love football. Yeah. I, I'm I'm kind of an intense, especially when it comes to like competing. I'm yeah, I'm intense, and I always took that mindset to to baseball, which helped. Yeah. Um, so, but then ninth grade, I think, was my last. Year. I played eighth grade and ni- eighth grade football, basketball, baseball, eighth ninth grade basketball and baseball and then after that it was just baseball yeah gotcha. like, hey, I, I figure i'm pretty good at this i got a little <laughs> little future huh yeah Did it started happening about then ninth tenth grade where you're like wait i can you starting to separate yourself a little bit or when did you no, feel like that not even then uh i mean for me i didn't play football because i got in a car accident so I sh- that shut me down for eighth grade wow. and then i mean i really w- w- the way i was coached playing football when i was a little kid i mean i really don't I wasn't good with the the plays. Like it was so yeah. simple, and then right. getting to high school, uh, they're throwing out all these plays. I was like, I don't, I don't know, what, yeah. I don't know what we're <laughs> what talking about here. Doing? So yeah. I was a little intimidated with yeah. that part. Yeah. But uh, but no, I mean, yeah, probably about eighth. I mean, ninth grade is mm-hmm. is ninth tenth grade. I had the itch to play football, but kind of realized that baseball was my my real passion. Yeah. Yeah. That I was a lot better at. Yeah. So yeah, um, and then. Probably his sophomore year was probably the year where um, kind of took off for me and still had to prove myself a little bit. Yeah. You know, they had a it wasn't common to even ninth grade baseball. I didn't make varsity. So right. it was common and, and times have changed a little bit, but it was common. Like you didn't make varsity in ninth grade, at, yeah. at least in St. Paul. So, no, yeah, you were working your way up. Yeah, yeah. So I had to play JV yeah. um, and then work my way up and had to beat a senior out um, sophomore year. So. Um, and then after that, it it, it kind of took off, mm-hmm. yeah. and um, really had to learn a lot about work ethic and yeah, how to work out and yeah. what hard work really is. Right. But right, um, yeah, and got to meet a lot of a lot of great people playing a bunch of different teams throughout the summer and yeah. fall, and, and and then went to LSU, and you know I the draft or the the college recruiting process. I mean, I don't. We were it was so foreign to me and my dad. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. I mean, LSU was always the goal. I didn't yeah, think about it. Don't even care about it. There was yeah. nowhere else. So yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I manifested a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and I come, like my dad always made me visualize stuff when I was a That's kid. Awesome. And yeah. I don't even know if he realized what he was doing. But right. um, but yeah, LSU was the goal. I didn't think about anywhere else. That was like it. Southeastern yeah. would call me or, or and, and no knock against any sure, other school. But of course. another school would call me and I, I wouldn't even return the call or, or, yeah, yeah. or knew. entertain it because it's just not what I it's not That's where right. I wanted to be. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they could have told you. Nope. This was the plan. Yeah. And then yeah. I went to a camp, uh, like a fall ball camp or yeah. a hitting camp at LSU 
my junior year, and I had to be drugged to it because it was over Thanksgiving. I, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> no. anti, anti fall baseball, if, if yeah. anybody's wondering. But there you um, go. <laughs> Put them so, on yeah, the record right yeah, here. <laughs> I, I got drugged to that, which I didn't want to go, but I did good. And, and that's kind of when I got on LSU's radar. So they they stayed in touch, invited me to another camp here and there. And then yeah. they offered me my, I think the end of my junior year. Wow. Uh, yeah. They offered me a whopping book scholarship. Let's go. Oh, nice. Which the books it's actually like, a lot. Of, it's I, pretty expensive. Well, <laughs> you, you, you thought it was, <laughs> yeah. but then I was like, I only need half of these. So yeah, it was like yeah. 250 bucks. <laughs> What's a book? I don't need that. Uh, but I didn't care. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my goal. I was, yeah, I, I, they, they told my dad that, and I was like, "Yeah, tell, like, tell him now." My dad's like, "No, let's, let's think about this. Let's negotiate a little what bit. What are we huh? thinking about? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what are we negotiate here?" So, <laughs> right. Um, that's that's funny, man. A book scholarship. A book scholarship. Yep. yep. <laughs> and then, um, you know, getting to LSU, it was, you know, that really is the turning point for yeah, me because right. we were really bad my 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 freshman year. Coach Maneri came in. It was his new year, right. new regime. Right. So, um, you know, they 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 beat us up as far as you know, trying to see what what we're made of, yeah. who's going to make it, who's not going to yeah. make it. Um, I mean, the the conditioning and the strength and uh, you know all the training we did was yeah, it was tough. And I, I thought about I, I remember being in um, in my brother's apartment, my older brother, his apartment. I was like, I don't know if I, I was like, I don't. Like this is brutal. Like yeah, this, I yeah. want to play baseball. Right. And and he kind of like had a. He's like, you're like, what are you talking about? He right. kind of like, kicked me in the butt. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was a a little wake up call too to, you know, stick it out, yeah. tough yeah. it out. Um, yeah. I knew that's what I always wanted to do, but it just wasn't fun. You yeah. Know? I was waking up with anxiety every day. Like, yeah. who screwed up today, or did I screw up? Who's yeah. getting smoked to run ten miles? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So um, I think that's a theme a lot of people overlook with college athletes, the pressure of a college athlete to perform, but also do school. And that's also a time where you're trying to figure life out. You mm -hmm. know, like some of you, uh, some of, you know, people are like, yes, pros is what I'm after. Some people are like, look, I'm along the ride for college. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) uh, For college, I'm not really looking afterwards. I'm just here to have fun. So it's it's just a decision making time. But the pressure a college athlete feels is like tremendous. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I th- I'm assuming I was not a college athlete. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean it's. I think it's a book scholarship. Uh, pressure and different. It depends on how you view it, um, or how you view pressure. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, there there wasn't pressure to like to to make the mile and whatever sure, or to right, do right. it. Um, you know, the I think the the pressure for me came later on. Yeah. Um, you know, when you have more responsibilities at the time in college, it was, you know, you're with, you're with your boys. Yeah. You're developing relationships and bonds because you're getting just beat down yeah, right. every single day. And if you make it through that, the bonds for life and it's yeah. strong, it makes you, it makes you stronger. And that's, that's the reason why we were good. So we were, we were not very good my freshman year. Right. Started off not very good sophomore year, and I didn't even really play mm-hmm. my freshman year. Um, and I've always said like, who knows if, uh, you know, college baseball, you know, like it is today, if it was like, like, totally like different. this back then, I mean, would I have even made it? Would I have transferred? I don't know. Cause I yeah. didn't play a ton, maybe like half the season here right. and there, but I don't, I don't know if I contributed a whole lot freshman year, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I was there and part of the group that stuck together, um, which we have a close group. The guys that came in, at least from my freshman year, like right. we're very close. Um, There's and something that, to be said about that. That's part of the reason y'all yeah, accomplished what you did. For sure. It's because and, you went through those tough times together. And yeah. Started out. And, and I mean, in, in my sophomore year, we started off not very good um, either. But, you know, we kind of hit our stride and had a little wake up call during the mid middle of the year. And then you just kind of get hot. There's no rhyme. Or, yeah. You know, everybody's asked me for years, like, what was the turning point? I'm like, I don't <laughs> like I remember yeah. when. Yeah. but. Sure. You know, I feel like I've made up a bunch of stories <laughs> as to why. I mean, um, people want a good story. You know, something just clicks, and then you get yeah. on a roll, and you just—it's mm-hmm. all about momentum and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. So we just we just caught some momentum, and then and next, I mean, and also we had a good group of older guys too to kind of yeah. yeah. you know get us some some edge and some attitude, right. and some cockiness. Yeah, I think um, that's a big part of it. Got to be is that you could believe it. Yeah. Y'all, y'all started to see it happen. You're like, oh wait, 
Yeah, I it mean, and for, and for us, I mean, we watch, especially being a local guy, we watched a lot of the old videos from the old guys. So that was the pressure for me, if, if anything, might have been to kind of live up to those expectations yeah, right. of the guys that played before us. Because, right. I mean, it's a huge tradition. But, yeah. you know, so we, we kind of caught a heater uh, in 08 and then 09. I mean, you know, we fell short, went to Omaha in 08. And then 09, there was like, there was no choice. It was like, we're going to do it no matter yeah. what. We were Omaha so confident. Bus. but. yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, that's kind of the short condensed version oh, yeah. of, you know, the journey to LSU. And right. then, and then after that, um, you know, we kind of all, we finished on top, won that championship. And, and then the guys that came in, not that we all talked about it, but we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. Right. And then, and then we all got drafted and, and we, we felt there was the right time to, to go to the next to step. Yeah. I mean, you finish on top. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, let's go, let's go, yeah. let's go to the next step. Yeah. So, um, you know, I was lucky to get drafted with Sean Ochenka, who I played, me and him came to, came cool. up together at LSU. And then yeah. we both got drafted with Toronto. So we've been together for, That's awesome. we were together 10 years of our That's cool. baseball lives. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the minor leagues, I don't know if you have enough time to talk about Please, it, but it, man, was, we do. but it was a grind. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. So loved, what was the minor league program minute. that you went to? So I so getting drafted by Toronto uh, in the fifth round. I went to rookie ball for like a couple of days, sure. and then and then low A in short season in Auburn, New York. Come on, don't remember a whole lot about Auburn. Yeah, um, probably my choice. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I got there so late. I was there, I don't even remember. It might have been yeah. a month, and then and then come back home, and then come back home, and it was great because mm -hmm. we were still kind of riding on that yeah. national championship oh, high. Yeah, but absolutely, um, you know, and then and then you just work your way up so i started i was kind of a slow it was kind of a slow burn for sure. me as far as I, I i touched every level just yeah. about and um you know went through a couple injuries that kind of maybe slowed up yeah. at the early mid part of my career mm -hmm. like my third year in yeah. that i just couldn't get over and then finally um got to you know got through my minor league career with Toronto. Yeah. Um, I was always a home run guy, but never yeah. got the chance to, to get called up with him. And I became a, a minor league free agent in 2015. And so signed with San Diego, kind of a breath of fresh air. I'm finally actually making normal money because yeah. you don't make anything that's, in the minors. That's wild, man. I didn't have a comment in a paycheck until I was like 27. You kidding, man. So that's crazy. You know, Trying to live in in Buffalo, New York, making yeah, seriously, well, different a thousand bucks is not realistic. <laughs> yeah. And I got a wife who's pregnant, right? So we're all shacking up like a bunch of bums. <laughs> yeah. uh, so and we what moved an thirty times. I mean, that's that's thirty times. Wow. I mean, the you know the the real champ is my wife because towards yeah. the end of my career, it got tough on her because we moved so many times and. You know, my last year with Toronto, I think I got called, you know, went up and down six or seven times. Yeah. While she was That's eight, wild. eight, seven, eight months pregnant. Jeez, dude. So, Man. so, and, and I got to go catch a flight or yeah. a bus mm -hmm. or whatever. And so she's got to pack everything up and drive six hours. So, Man. That's the very, very condensed version of yeah, it. Um, yeah. And then I get my shot with, with San Diego, signed a free agent deal with him as a minor leaguer. And, and then at that point for me, you know, I got called up because at that point I just, I didn't care. I, I didn't, you know, I always believed that I was going to get there no matter sure. what. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, when's it going to happen? When's, yeah. There was never a doubt of hanging it up. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Like it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then, and then finally I kind of forced their hand. I was playing so good to start that year and, mm -hmm. and we, everything just kind of fell into place with some injuries or whatever. Yeah. So I got my shot and I don't think anybody expected me to do it, but yeah. I was always a home run guy. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I always knew I could do it, but yeah. You know, I wasn't a big average guy, but yeah. you know, I got there my first half season, hit twenty home runs, and it was kind of like a fairy tale. Yeah, um, that's an incredible experience. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be like you know, you, you. I think the biggest thing is what I'm hearing you say is, I think most people, when I'm hearing you tell your story about all the times you got called up and back down and called up, and back down, and everything you and your wife had to go through, I'm sure plenty of people were like, yeah, I might just hang this up with yeah. what it's doing mm -hmm. for me and my family. But that was never an option. No. And I, and I applaud the people. I mean, I applaud the guys that know. Yeah. That, that, like hey, they, that's they, for them. The thing that I applaud is them making a decision to do yeah. something. Like my decision was like, I'm going to make it no matter what, yeah. Yeah. however long that takes. But, you know, also, I, you know, I have some friends that they played a couple of years yeah. and they knew they wanted to go to law school. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So, I mean, I, I applaud that knowing what you want to do. For yeah, me, sure. all I ever want to do is hit a baseball. So, yeah. That's cool. Um, well, I see the theme since high school. It's like, hey, you're on the cusp of making the team, but we need, you need to prove yourself. And then your freshman year, hey, new new coach, you need to prove yourself. So, like, you, you, it's just a common theme of what you've had to do. So, you mm-hmm. having that mindset and, like you said, manifesting it. it and I don't, know, I don't know if I would have got there if I – if it was smooth sailing for me and I was always the best, I probably wouldn't have made it. Because yeah, I know different. guys that yeah. fizzled out early or, yep. you know – got into trouble off the field and yep. it didn't work out. So, right. yep. I mean, there's no doubt that yeah. I needed those, you know, I, I and it's still like, I always need to prove myself. If yeah. I'm yeah, too yeah. comfortable, I'm, I'm going to slack off. You're not yeah. growing. Yeah. Right. So what, did you have a moment when you got to San Diego where you did get a chance to reflect and like, man, I'm really doing this? Uh, No, on four, you know, I, I always like to kind of coach and at least sh- – share share yeah. my experiences with whether it's my kids or yeah. my brother or this kid mm-hmm. or that kid but yeah. i think the one thing that i i did a good job of which you know you keep your eye on the prize but right. i i was i was very caught up in the moment as far as not really looking back and reflecting like how long it took me to get there but then right. um you yeah, know i didn't look to the future too too yeah. much either so I never, uh, you know, even when I was in high school, I didn't think about a lot of guys when they get to high school and get signed by LSU right. or wherever mm-hmm. they're, they're just waiting till they get to LSU. Yeah. Like I was never, yeah. w- you know, looking yeah. forward to that. I just treated it as if it was about to happen. Like when I was in the minor leagues, I treated it like it was about to happen. Yep. I know, you know, when's it going to happen, but it was like, all right, I'm, I'm because it's a grind in the minor leagues, I'm the sure. dog days of summer, and it's like, all right, I'm going to treat this batting practice in the middle of Oki Pinoak, Michigan, <laughs> like it, I'm in the big leagues because yeah. you can't just turn it up yeah. when right. you get there. You have to act like you're there yeah. and because that's how you develop muscle memory and the yeah. confidence and all that. But a turning uh, – sorry, you said – was there a turning point where no, I reflected I, I, I on something there? I guess just when, you were, when, you, you, when you're in the big leagues – you know, you're doing what you're doing. Did you ever take a minute? And I think it, and I'm not answering for you, but I think just seeing how you're doing this, you're always looking to say, you know, I, I want to appreciate where I'm at, but it, there's more to it still. There's still more you wanted to accomplish and stuff like yeah. that. So did you ever sit there in the dugout after you smashed a homer and be like, oh, wait, uh, it's a real deal. Like, every I'm time here, you, I'm you doing hit a bomb, this, you're like, you know? yeah, no, I, proved it. yeah, I mean, I was so, I think because, I acted the way I did as far yeah. as preparing for yeah. me to do that and visualize you hitting a home coming. run in the big leagues and getting to the big leagues. I prepared for it for so long mentally yeah. Yeah. that um, I didn't really reflect on it because I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I was, if I did something that was ridiculous, I'd probably be more so like, can't believe it just yeah. happened. Yeah. Like, look yeah. where I am. But right. I was so focused and that's knew cool, I was man. supposed to be well, there. That's confident. I think yeah. that speaks um, volumes about yeah, you. I mean, if, if anything, I mean, I mean, yeah, there were times where I was like, you know, this is incredible. I, sure. You, you, you're you not surprised at what you do and you yeah. don't reflect on hitting that home run or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I think it's just a combination of like the anticipation of what what is the big league going to be like? Because right, you yeah. hear about you know, the, the private jets or whatever. And you don't know, like, <laughs> you hear about the food in the locker room. I mean, if anything, it's like, it's like, wow, we get, I can get steak whenever I want, or we have the <laughs> yeah. private jet and like, yeah. you know, these guys are going to get my clothes together or right. whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, the coolest thing for me is I had to, un- we had an unbelievable place to live. Yeah. So if you're at Petco Park in San Diego, I was lucky to, we had a guy get traded, BG Upton got traded wow. to Toronto. And, um, and so I knew I played for Toronto and we were living in like a little bitty townhouse, a little bit far away. And, you know, whenever you get traded that, that apartment's done. Yeah, They're going to yeah. pay for it anyway. So sure. I was able to kind of slide on in there and call Toronto to do it. And it was an unbelievable penthouse. That's awesome. Love that. Like center field. You know, if you're looking at home plate, you look at center field at Petco. It's a huge brick building. I had the, we had the whole <laughs> That's cool. top floor That's awesome. balcony. It was, un, it was a That's awesome. full wall of wine, shades, hit a button, everything comes down. So, I mean, yeah. Comes we you know we have our first kid, and sometimes my wife's like, oh, "I'm not going to go to the game today. I'm just going to watch it." Watch it from the window. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, incredible. if anything, that was cool. the 
that was the coolest thing for me because yeah. we had an unbelievable place where people could come and stay yeah. and, mm-hmm. and enjoy it with us. That's, that's awesome. cool, man. Yeah. That's really, really cool. It's a good reflecting time. Yeah, Looking absolutely. At your that's yeah, yeah, I, I reflect a lot more, but uh, <laughs> well, a think, lot of stories that it's just, you can't, no, yeah. you can't just come out at some that's point. That's right. Uh-huh. I think, it, like, I think what you're saying, man, it speaks volumes that you're like, you know, it, it, you want to take time to appreciate it. And like, man, you worked hard to get where you, you were, but without that, hey, I'm just going to, I know that I'm already going to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it. It carries a different type of, uh, once you're there, you're like, yeah, well, I expected this. Yeah. So that's yeah. pretty cool, man. Speaks volumes. You're like, yeah. you act like you've been there before, you know? Yeah. Like this, yeah, it's my first time, but this ain't going to be my last yeah. time, you know? Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's, you know, the advice I tell people is really enjoy it. I mean, you always have those older guys, you know, if y'all played sports in high school or whatever, there's an older guy or an older coach, like, oh, yeah. enjoy it. Or like even with the kids, like, enjoy it because it goes fast, right? right? You're like, all right, whatever, old man. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's true. I mean, I had guys in the minor leagues, coaches are like, goes by fast and yeah. like i'm gonna play till i'm 40 or yeah. 50 whatever yeah. um but it does it goes by super fast so if anything like really appreciate where you are and and, and take time to reflect because yeah. it's uh it's important yeah. yeah so now what was the transition like when you realize okay i'm done with baseball mm-hmm. and then you're like what do i have to i mean you've played baseball for so long what do you transition into? And, and I'm sure there were tons of options. Right. And so, you know, tell us a little bit about that process, why you transitioned into what you did, what were the other options? And then, you know, a little bit about what you're doing now, I guess. Yeah. So the transition's hard. I mean, that's the hardest thing. I mean, unless, unless you have 20 million in the bank, right. You got to go to work. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it was a challenge because, you know, I played for a long time. I played for 10 seasons and the first, seven years i didn't make any money yeah you're just making it make so you know if you get called up earlier you can make honest money right. and uh you get called up and down you can maybe stash them away or whatever but you know we didn't have any money uh and then i got called up to the big leagues and i was you know saved as much as i could so i'm very thankful for of course you That's know i had I, a, I had a short window to make some really good money and and stash it away and and luckily i wasn't stupid with it and, and yeah. spent it because it really helped both of us bridge a gap to the next phase. So, right. you know, it's a struggle trying to figure out. I mean, for me, you know, I, I thought I would be playing a little bit longer. Sure. But, um, you yeah, know, that's the hardest part. I think if you know, like, hey, this is, you know, I'm retiring after this year. Right. I think you're more at peace with it. But for me, it, it, it was tougher because, um, you know, I thought I could still play. But for me, it, it you know, it wasn't the right opportunity for me to drag my wife and our two babies through the mud again it's because decision, like i said we moved 30 times and, and at the end it was up down up down and and um i got traded three times my last year wow so um i didn't see my kids at all that year and then they finally come or one of my kids because the baby was too too much of a pain to bring them but for her to bring right, them both right uh, and so they come to see me when i'm triple a as soon as they get there, I get to the field late and, um, you know, they're like, hey, like, where you been? I mean, my family's here. Yeah. So they're like, you're going to the big leagues. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, I was mad that I was going to the big leagues Wow, yeah. because yeah. all I want to do is see my, yeah. my, my kids and my yeah. wife. So and then I went back down. And so I knew at that point, like, if I'm mad about getting to the big leagues, then you know, what's the point? Even if I'm making all the money in the world, like, yeah, you know, it, it's if I can't share yeah, a four for four game with two home runs with with my wife and family, like, what does it matter? What am I giving this up for? Right. Yeah. So yeah. and it was important for me to to have the kids with me. Um, and if I couldn't do it, then it didn't mean anything because I always wanted them to experience the life. But it was too hard when you're not making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you're living out of hotels and um it, you know, especially when you're back and forth yeah, that much, right. it's too much. So wow. for us, for me, that was when it was time to, to move on to the next phase. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it was a relief with that, you know, sure. I'm very grateful for my career, right. uh, but it was a relief. Like I don't have to go hit today or yeah. I don't have to, <laughs> yeah. I don't have to deal with the pressure of, yeah. uh, you know, worrying like, is my swing right today? Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, so to bridge the gap that, you know, it is very difficult. And that's the thing that I talk with most of my friends about that I play with. Like, it's hard to figure out what you want to do after. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and so now, you know, there was a couple of opportunities. I would have loved to coach. Yeah. Um, 
you know, coaching is my passion. I know the game well. I don't think anybody can dissect the swing better than me right. with the naked eye. But, yeah. um, you know, for me, after traveling and, and me and the family going through the moves like that, I wasn't ready to – as much as I would love it, I wasn't willing to jump right back into get, that. Start back yeah, over from sense. square one and go coach low A ball in, in Lansing, Michigan. Yeah, right. Um, and in college, you know, it was either LSU or bus for me. I like, yeah. like I played, and I'm like, <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not willing to go to, um, you know, Western Kentucky and coach yeah, or yeah, wherever. Yeah. Right. So, you know, for me, I was like, you know what? I've had my time in the sun and I think it's time for me to focus on my, on my family wow. yeah. and really be full-time dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then at the same time, my wife, right at the end, um, long story short, she found out about her business. Now, um, you know, there's a big baseball wives group and they share a lot of ideas or, Hey, right. who do you know? Who's the realtor mm -hmm. that, you know, in right. Baltimore or whatever, we're moving, we're getting traded. How do we get in that group? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I think you gotta be a woman first. <laughs> okay. uh, well, uh, but yeah, you know. so that's a, yeah. So, so that's a powerful group. Yeah. Right. On their bad side, there, I guess. Man. Yeah. Uh, but no, they got a lot of resources and, sure. and they were, there was a company that, that they would talk about, um, when you're getting traded, yeah. like, Hey, this company neat method, they come in, you know, they get us all unpacked, like they organized my life. Yeah. So she had heard about it, uh, looked into it a little bit more and and it's right up her alley. She's That's an cool. organizer. She yeah. is as polished as you could be. And, yeah. Um, so she applied for the franchise and, and she got it. And uh, I wasn't quite done, but kind of knew like, all right, I think I'm done. Writing's on the wall and so she got yeah. the, She got the franchise. I'm like, are we? Are we doing this? We're doing this. Yeah. Right. Like we're, you're going to own a business? <laughs> yeah. So, um, did it, had no idea what to expect. Yeah. And, and that was another thing too. I was like, all right, let's, you know, it's time because being in baseball, you, it, it's, it's a selfish career. Sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the back burner, right. wife, kids, you know, I'm, I'm number one yeah. because this is, this is the job. It's, it's, yeah. you have to, it's all day, every yeah. day. Um, and so I was like, all right, you know, it's time to really, you know, see, let see her, what she let her do her yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, Cause she was, you know, she's, she was a teacher. She's changed That's, her whole life for yeah, me. Yeah. And so, um, you know, she was marketing, advertising out of college and then she had totally switched and became a teacher. Yeah. Which wasn't her intention, but she became a teacher so we could be together in the summer. That's awesome. Um, so I, it was time for her to do what, she, what I think she was meant she to really do so. Yeah. And, but for me, um, I there was a I had no idea where to turn. I mean, <laughs> which is normal. Yeah, you know? I was like, yeah. all right, what's everybody do out of what's every athlete do? <laughs> Medical sales, yeah, insurance, exactly, that's, financial that's advising. Um, and and at the, for me, I had a lot of responsibilities. I had a house note. Yep. Had private school tuition. Um, and I really kind of took off like a year yeah. trying to bridge the gap, trying to figure out like, all right, am I going to play again? Am I going to get a shot again? Right. Um, so, you know, just kind of burning money, yeah. bridging the gap. So, um, for me, I had to, I had to find something, number one, that I would like. Right. Um, and then really like, where's the most potential? Give you an opportunity for the quality you know, some, of life you Some of the have. other yeah, ones, it was sure. like, it was kind of like, I, I mean, you get into insurance and you're starting making very, very little. Yeah. So I was like, I, I, you know, the upside's great, but I, I can't do it right now. Yeah. I've been out I don't have year. 10 years. I've been to out a year. Out. Yeah. Right. You know, I don't have time to do it. So I had to go in something where I could make money right away. Yeah, right. And the sky's the limit. Yeah. So, um, but with that being said, I do, you know, I do like math and, and the, the puzzles yeah. and, and the problems. Right. And I like, mingle with people. So I thought about becoming, I thought about doing the medical sales and all that, but I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to wear scrubs and, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Do all that. I don't even know what's involved with it. Yeah, but exactly. I just want to do something different. Yeah. Um, I felt like with my background, the timing of when I stopped playing, I could do something different that really, I don't know of anybody that has my background that is in the mortgage business. Right. Now there's a couple that I found out after the fact, Six, but, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but the one thing I would I would have never entertained it though if um, 
if my boss, Richard Lanassa, didn't get me in it. Yeah. So I've known him since high school. So my wife, wow. me and wife dated in high school. They were neighbors in high school. Gotcha. And he was just always a cool guy, super mm-hmm. sharp, smart. Right. He did a good job of staying in touch. <laughs> and uh, and so he kind of proposed the idea. He's like, you want to get into finance? I'm like, I'm a baseball player. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. go play. <laughs> sure. Uh, and, then, and then once I figured out that I was done, um, you know, I kind of gave him a call, but I was really looking at investing and went down a rabbit hole of YouTube and all that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Rental properties and- Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, you, know, you got Grant Cardone, bigger pockets and all that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I got a little money saved up. I'm just gonna exactly. buy rentals and I'm yeah. never gonna yeah, work again. Right. Like, this is, I just put money and I get Simple. money. I'm like, easy. <laughs> yeah. And then I realized like, okay, uh, you know, what better way to know about real estate than the finance part. How so, you, you know, when I was looking at investing in real estate, even though I haven't done it yet, um, the typical, you know, the time's not right. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was just crunching numbers and I really liked the the numbers crunching that yeah. that I was doing. I was like, this is like yeah. cool how you can do this and mm-hmm. how this yeah. works out. And so I thought about becoming a, a real estate agent too. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it was just a good blend yeah. of real estate and the numbers part. And then he's a great, sharpest guy yeah you know, if it wasn't for him i wouldn't have gone to work for just anybody yeah. so yeah um thankful for that and that's that's really in a nutshell how i got into yeah. into this business that's cool yeah that's you awesome. saw somebody else do it that connection of who you knew was yep. a massive part that played yep. in all of it for sure. yeah i mean and the upside is you know it's the sky's the limit like baseball it's mm-hmm. you always have the carrot yeah dangling in mm-hmm. front of you of getting to the big yeah. leagues and same thing with you guys exactly it's, the competition Sky side zone. of it is the still there. Yeah, yes. there you go. That adrenaline Dude, still that. gets going. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I still, still got the fire. I still yeah. get mm-hmm. mad if I don't. Yes. So yeah. I, I think I always need that. Yeah. If not, I really can't sleep well at night. Yeah. I don't feel like I really accomplish yeah. much. Yeah. It's good. It's, yeah. it's, it's weird to explain. I'm sure you all get it. Though. Oh, yeah. Get it for sure. It's honestly cool that, you know, being an athlete, whether college, but especially in professional level, you know, we put we put those people on a pedestal of like, wow, these people are like, cream of the crop and then like you know whatever the exit looks like we, we see you're a normal person so like it's, it's honestly encouraging when that happens mm-hmm. for the rest of us yeah <laughs> to yeah. see like all right you know yes he's an awesome dude he, he did a lot of cool things but he's also he's like the rest of us he's got same a family struggle. yeah same struggles oh yeah uh so it's cool but you know so going a little deeper you know not all of us have this dream exit of like a drew Brees with hall of fame yeah. and he's got the businesses set up that he's going to go right. to after the timing's just perfect so we we don't, you know, the normal person can overlook how how hard of a process that can be to transition from all you've ever known right. that you've worked years and years for to go to the to that level to then, you know, to you it may feel like now I'm stepping back, like I, I'm I'm mm-hmm. losing my my identity, I'm losing yep. my passion. Um, and I'm not speaking that for you, but like, I guess bring us in no, a little bit. You're on the right track here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring us in on that thought process or that mindset you had and I know, you know, you mentioned being like, hey, this is for my wife too, but just you, raw mm-hmm. thoughts of like, what, what was that like going from, all right, my time as a as a player is over, now I'm going to the next stage. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm very passionate about how I coach my kids and other kids. So we're all into sports right now. Yeah. Um, Daughter plays soccer. Now she wants to play basketball, <laughs> gymnastics, stumbling, all this. Yeah. Uh, my son, football, basketball, baseball. Yeah. Obviously, he he loves baseball. He loves other sports too. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I love it when he's into baseball because that's what I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, sports have gotten crazy with the kids now. How old are mm-hmm. y'all's kids? Five and three. You know, the same. Five same. and three and a one month old. And I've got one on the way. Okay. Well, congrats. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, sports, it, it's crazy now. Like I said, I, I hate fall ball. Yeah. <laughs> I hated it when I played. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I going to make my kid play it? Yeah. Um, you know, it's the, the problem for me is and what I teach my son, everybody. I am not a, you know, I don't push them to go outside. and sure. throw, Do I want them to go outside yeah. and throw the ball? Absolutely. Because right. that's where you get good. I don't, I don't like them going to take lessons three days a week yeah. and turn them into a robot. I want them to figure it out on their own and develop their own identity. But, you know, I some people get on me because, you know, we're playing fall baseball and that's a whole nother deal. But, yeah. you know, we're on this uh, a baseball team that, you know, they play in the summer and then they want you to play games yeah. in the fall. 
And there's practice in the fall, but then football's in the fall too. Yeah. And then baseball, basketball runs into it. So, you know, I, you need a break from all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and professional baseball takes off four months out of the year. Now they're still working, but they're yeah. normal human beings for right. four months out of the year. Yeah. Right. So the thought of us pushing six and seven year olds and even anybody for that matter to play all year round, like we're not helping the kids. No. And, and what happens is, and the reason why I do that, like I, 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 and I hate to say it, I almost try to talk my son out of playing basketball this year as great of a sport as it is because, sure. you know, baseball went for so long and then football went for long. Right. That I'm like, we need a break here. Yeah. Now he wants to play, but, but I was like, hey, you want to take off baske basketball and that way, you know, you and dad can go hunting and fishing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. There you and go. then after he's like, I want to play basketball. Yeah. Man. All right. Yeah. I'll play basketball. Man, it's been a shift. I remember, you know, a little bit younger than you, but when I went out for my ninth grade baseball team, we had about half the guys that try out were on the, uh, we were, we were at the, uh, the local park. Yeah. We only played about 20 games a year. Right. And then the other half did the travel ball. Right. And so a real small fraction, me and one or two guys made the high school team, went all the way through. Now, they don't have club ball like that anymore. Right. Like, I, they don't have the park ball like that anymore. Mm -hmm. You got to do the tournaments. You got to be playing 12 months out of the year. You have to have the lessons to seem like they you got a shot. They want to make you think you have to do it. Yeah. But for me, it's like, now, is playing all year round going to get them better? Absolutely. Sure. You, yeah. you do anything long enough, you're going to get better. But, right. you know, the problem for me is that the kids at some point you do it that's the only thing you do and you wrap your identity in it yeah so kind of what you were hitting on it's your your identity is for me was a baseball player yeah mm -hmm. that's who you are you walk in a room and you really you know don't have a conversation about anybody else or you kind of shut off because you're a yeah. baseball player and then if you know if you're you know recognizable enough everybody wants to talk to you about baseball that's it. right so yeah. you kind of shut off because you want to escape from baseball you want to talk about hunting or fishing or right. something yeah. else right so you know it's kind of a weird experience when you you're going through it um but i've noticed i mean for me firsthand when you're done with it you got to figure out who you are again yeah so I'm, well, I'm a big advocate of not going all year round and going hunting and fishing with my son yeah. or taking him on the boat or letting him figure out how to wakeboard or something yeah. like that um that way or, or let me go work on the lawnmower yeah. or, or yeah. build something just you know, some simple resets just to get different skills a yeah, different perspective right. on other things you can do i yeah. mean he may be a great baseball player but wants to be you know a contractor sure mm -hmm. i don't care right. but i feel like i, I want to groom him to make that choice and not feel like i'm a baseball player this is all i do yeah um yeah and they may not truly enjoy it but they're good at it yeah. so um, but yeah, that's the tough part. And I think that's the struggle with all athletes coming out. Yeah. Why you see drug problems or depression, you know, mental health is a thing that I thought was, I'm like, I'm like, this is like an yeah, excuse BS so, yeah. or whatever. But right. you know, there's a, there is a part of it that yes, it's, 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 it's mental health in the sense of like, how can we help everyone sure. figure mm -hmm. it just like y'all like, yeah. like real estate is your job, but you know, I think, you know, you're not real estate agent is not your identity there's that's a right. lot more to it so right. that's a, i mean it's a you know and i haven't really had the chance to talk to a lot of people about it yeah. um it's not something we really talk about it it exists and i'm just an advocate of doing different things like yeah. re really with my kids yeah um and a lot of parents just really don't they're they just fall in the trap because they feel like they have to play yep. all year round but it's going to hurt them at the end mm -hmm. i mean you think about 300 kids at the park playing how many of those are going to not this not to shoot down dreams? No, like, of course, yeah, yeah. because, you know, people that told me that I couldn't stand them when they were yeah, like, yeah, when, of course, you know, when I was coming up, they were yeah. like, I was good. But they're like, well, you know, only like one percent make it. Right. And it really kept a chip on my shoulder. Like, and I'm like, really, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it yeah. really made me mad. So right. I definitely don't want to do that. No, of course. Um, just in the sense of like, yeah, work your butt off. Right. Become the best you could be. Like, right. commit to being a great baseball player football player mm -hmm. but yeah take the breaks and like you're not forced to but you shouldn't have to be forced to yeah. play all year round baseball that's like, right they're six seven eight like who cares exactly. and they're like well they're not playing good competition i'm like what happened to the yeah. what happened to dad yes going uh -huh. out there 
and throwing to you. And that's or the, dad doing the ball on a rope and kill, you know, whacking his it, wrist yeah, with it. I, I think you're hitting it is that that's the society that we're in. And mm-hmm. so you've transitioned where, okay, your identity was in that you were a baseball player, much like, hey, we sell real estate. So that's who we are. But you got to start them young to say, you know, it, it's not – you're not going to find your identity in what you do mm-hmm. because you can do a lot of different stuff. Right. It's not you're just a baseball player, so you do that 12 months out of the year. It's all these different things. And I think it's awesome that you say, okay, well, I see where I kind of lost myself a little bit or mm-hmm. just right. I was just totally absorbed in baseball. So you're yeah. not going to let that happen with your kids. No. I mean, go all in on what you want to do. For no sure, question. Man. Be the but, best that you can be at it. Yeah. 100%. Go all in, but you need the breaks. Yeah. It's just like it's just like marriage with the kids. I mean, that's the, the house dads, right? It's that's it. Um, I mean, you know, you get in that rut with the family and kids. Like, you know, work life's crazy, but yeah, it's like you need a mom and dad date that's or right. a mom and dad trip. Like, yeah. it's important. That's like, reset. It's it's the same thing with sports. It's like, could you imagine if you never took a break from your kids or went to dinner with your wife? Like, yeah, you'd go insane. Yeah, same thing with with sports. Like, you're gonna go insane if you never get a break. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. It, it's it's funny too because you hear like the Kobe's and the Tom Brady's, and they're like they're the ones that have the mentality of like all in, and but I feel like that's almost, I mean maybe it's a hot topic, a toxic thing that people want to try to do, but they always overlook the the, the rest, the break. Yeah, now don't know? give me. I mean I don't know Tom Brady, or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so like when I played, I was all in. I, there was no one that was gonna outwork me. I mm-hmm. was incredible work ethic, but. You, you gotta like they're gonna take like the when i say all in and, and, and take the breaks like the off season is the break that's right yeah. like you're still gonna work out and get your body right For sure um now when the season starts like that's when there's no like you're not going mm-hmm. no. you may go fishing on an off day but you're not you're not going skateboarding or but whatever yeah. but it's even yeah. glamorized now like the off season oh they're getting it in the off season i see so many videos of like a basketball team they're they're working out after the game because they're so dedicated and i'm like I mean, that's cool, but yeah, yeah. you got to rest. It's coming know? a little bit. Yeah. You know, now, in, in season, you got to do you like yeah, yeah. you got to do all that. But the really, I'm more focused on like what I mean. The break, the off season, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like yeah. you still got to train. Like it's not for sure. You know, it's not like the '60s to where you take yeah. four months off, go get a job, and then you show up. <laughs> you show up at Jupiter, Florida, like yeah. getting in shape. Like you need to show in tip top shape. Right. That's so, a car dealership for four months. Yeah, but yeah. in the off season, like you're gonna work. Like you're kind of you're just a normal human to where you're all in Monday through Friday, but like. When you get home from working out and hitting and doing your stuff, like shut it off. A little everything bit. is shut off. Like That's you're not right. thinking about sure. the, you're right. not thinking about striking out. Like you did your job, shut and now off. everything is shut off, and you're dad. Yeah. And then you're gonna go hunting on the week, whatever. That's right. So it's totally different. It's like you're you get that break. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, outside of the season, that's the break. So I, I think sure. kids need that. Yeah. Absolutely. That break. But I think if you weren't <laughs> if you're not giving when you're doing what you're doing, and if you're not doing it to the absolute most that you can do it then you can't take that break with any kind of peace because you're mm-hmm. just guilty of, well, I didn't really put in the work. Anyway. Yeah. So I think that's why you can rest well is because you're grinding mm-hmm. right. on the other stuff. Yep. So transition a little bit, talking about how uh, we're kind of going backwards. Just when you were gone and moving and doing all that different stuff in the minors and then up into the pros, how old were your kids at that point? Were they still like, you know, wh- how, I guess, what was it like trying to be a dad and a husband? Yeah. While I mean, you are being selfish at that point saying, hey, baseball about me right now. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was easy. It was hard on my wife. Um, That's a good point, man. Right. It was easy because um, she had to do the, the dirty work with it. She had to schedule right. the apartment. She had to schedule the flights, the moving. You know, all I did was like, and, and, and she was the best at it because- you know, my so we had my kids. Uh, we got pregnant my last year with San Diego, so 2015 season. Gotcha. So I was seven seasons in. Wow. Um, and then we had our daughter, and it was really like a fairy tale, to be honest with you, because I got called up to the. We had my daughter the off season. I signed with San Diego, and then you know we moved, lived together in in AAA in El Paso, and yeah. I got called up. My family was there. Um, and then I had a great season. So that was like a fairy tale. And like, That's we just real. had our first kid. Yeah. We get called up to the pinnacle. We have this unbelievable penthouse. Yeah. Everything's going right there. Everything was great. Um, and so, and then we had our, and we were doing so well that, um, it, like, it took me like a couple of weeks to kind of get my foot when I got called up. Sure. I wasn't doing 
terrible, or I may have been doing terrible actually, but um, it took me a couple of weeks to like yeah. really hit my stride. And luckily, I mean, I'm very grateful for them giving me a shot to give me two weeks to, get to really yeah. get my footing. Yeah. Um, but um, where was it going with this? No, shit? just um, with the, uh, so you had your second around oh, right sorry, after yeah. that because things so, started going yeah, well. So right? I was, so 2016 was like a great year. Like right before yeah. I got called up, yeah. I was the hottest player in baseball. Yeah. And, um, and so we get called up. It took me a couple weeks to get my footing in. Yeah. So my wife's like anything she could do to make it easy on me. Sure. That, you know, I'm already stressed about not playing well yeah. Yeah. or not proving myself, whatever. But then I catch my stride. And then finally, um, she tells me that we're pregnant. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Number Never. two, our, yeah. our daughter is 10 months at that point yeah. or yeah. whatever, maybe less than that. Right. Uh, right. so we have, um, you know, so that's when we had our son. So we had our son, the, uh, I had to fly home during spring training of the next season, gotcha. uh, in San Diego. So yeah. we had, we had the one for 2016, 2017, we had both of them. And so that was a shock, but that was, it, it was just down. funny how, uh, she wanted to not get me rattled about, <laughs> I just get called up. The last thing we need to worry about is money and not playing well. And we got to have two kids. That would yeah, be here we go. And, oh, and we need a house. We didn't have a house at the time. Right. So we bought a house without even me seeing it, wow. but we needed a place to live when we went home. Yeah. yeah. So it was a juggle of everything, but, uh, but you were you asking about the travel with well, them? Just part of, part of the travel and part, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the short answer is what you said at the beginning is that, uh, you weren't able to. Your wife did. She assumed yeah. all of that responsibility and did what she could. Yeah, but it, I mean, it for work. me, it was awesome because, you know, it was a lot on her. It was great for me. Yeah. You know, I loved having him there because that was my escape. So yeah, that's cool. As, even if I had a good, bad day, I could come home and I'm totally shut off. Yeah. The, the worst thing is whenever they weren't there and I'd have a bad game, I'd be by myself. Yeah. So that's tough. You know, that's why, you know, having roommates is good. But yeah. I mean, it, for me, it was awesome. Like, yeah. I woke up, smile on my face because my daughter is smiling. We can go get breakfast, and yeah. you know she's just being a kid. And yeah. Yeah. you know, fortunately, my wife uh, she didn't have to work during that time, so right. you know she could relax and take care of the kids. So and that was fun. Take them in the locker room. That's everything I wanted. Let them run That's the awesome. bases the after. Heck yeah. Uh, so I was. That was fun. Yeah. You know, the, the, but the end got tough. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what does yeah. it look like now? Now that you guys, uh, you're kind of both hitting your stride in, in your business and her business. Uh, you got a little more time, I'd say, uh, to be a family man. So what's it kind of look like now in terms of balance in the sense of, uh, you know, obviously you want to strive to succeed. She wants to strive to succeed, but you, you know, you got a family. So what's mm -hmm. the, the balance or harmony yeah. look like now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like this is almost more difficult. Really? Um, just for the fact of when I did play, I knew that I had a four month when window yeah. and then I was gone. Yeah. Now home 24 yeah. seven and she's running a great business. So we both, and, and then, you know, mortgage real estate, like you, just like baseball, like that's kind of selfish too, because you have to, yeah. you have to get it when it's yep. there. Yep. So, right. um, you know, if you let something slip, they're going to go to the next person. Exactly. So you have to, you have to always be turned on. So yeah. that's, that's the toughest part for me. Um, is she's, she really is running an unbelievable business yeah. better than me right now. Um, so it, it's, it's difficult juggling yeah. that. And I, I think it's, it's more difficult just because our schedules, yes, because right. it, it, you can never shut off. You're almost that's on it. call. So that's, yep. Yeah, for me, that's the most difficult part that I haven't mastered yet. And yeah. I'm honest to say, like, I'm not a, yeah. Yeah. you know, when, when I played, I knew exactly what to do each and every day. Now this life, it's, it's, it's harder because I, you know, a kid gets sick. Yeah. Well, she's got a job in New Orleans. Yeah. I could be more flexible and I could say, oh, we'll bring him to the doctor or whatever. But, but then you might miss out on that opportunity that comes. Exactly. So that's the hardest part. And that's I, tough. in the competitor in me i do not like losing and i can't stop i can't for me it's not a nine to five like i have a very difficult time if because the loan process is so labor intensive and they're they're more difficult now right. to where it's like and it, they take time if something's not done i, I can't shut it off so yeah. the hard part for me is 
it's more difficult now is being present uh, yeah. when you're busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we try. I mean, we really do. We, I, we're, I think we're better than the most at it sure. because we're very like we're into health and fitness and working out and like yeah. your mental space and all yes. that stuff. So, you know, we started, I don't know, I guess about a year ago. Um, trying to set boundaries with our with our phones. Good. Um, So, and I've been bad with it lately, but um, at really for for me, ideally like eight, eight thirty, the phone is in airplane mode. Love it in the office. Yeah, and you know that's been a game changer. Like I used to just move it in the bathroom. Sure, when it was right next to your nightstand. Yeah. And then I moved it into the office. <laughs> yeah. Now, then I moved it to the office and shut it off yeah, completely. Awesome. I don't even yeah. want, cause I don't want to e- even walk over there and see a Get notification. Yeah. Um, so we do a good job of that. So no phones in the bedroom. Phones are off completely. Love it. Uh, if something's happened, we don't have a landline either. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my mom, parents, Sorry about you. everybody <laughs> gets mad at me. Like if something Sorry, happens, man. like, yeah, I'm, smoke, I'm not, signal, I'm not yeah. your guy. Like come yeah. beat my door down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know where we are. So that's that's good, uh, and and I try Huge. my I try my best to not look at it until I try not to take it off airplane mode until the kids get out at uh, awesome. school. Yeah, that's great. Um, but that's, that's great. been huge. I like mm-hmm. sleeps way better. Yeah, that's the biggest thing why yeah. I did it because yeah. I could actually sleep. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, you have to, and I think that it's that's a game changer. It's a good point because I don't think most if you don't run a business like we do, most people don't get it that you are on call all the time. Right. And so it, it almost is easy. Hey, you got a nine five or you're doing what you're doing. You know, when you're off, mm-hmm. we're not off. Right. So we have to design those off times. So that's huge. And yeah, I even like sometimes I'll go through spurts too, where, and I probably need to go back to it. I've gone back and forth with shutting off notifications, like on my phone, like emails. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause it's easy like to get caught up. And even if you're not getting an email, if you're getting all those notifications, like you're, your subconscious is, your is like, sure. how many times do you, are you talk with somebody and they're like, they pick up the phone like, yeah. And yeah. Like, like, what do you, pass, like, but like, no. it's like, are you waiting on a call? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no, you're not. But it's the, it's the stupid habit of yeah. like, uh-huh. it's yep. like, a, it's like a, it's now like the phones have become and social media have become a, uh, like a social d- disruptor in the it sense has. of like people are socially yeah. awkward now You're because they connections. can't look at you in the eye and talk. Yeah. They're like, um, yeah. we're, we're at, yeah. an yeah. Apple watch now. Like, oh, I got the watch. They're Speaking talking on the phone. Like, rip the rip the watch. Exactly. Take it an Apple watch. Speaking know. of that, no, no. no he's okay. trying. That's yeah. why I took it off. He's trying I will to, never own one. Ever. He's trying to get you to accept uh, his Facebook friend request right now. So that's part of the. But now that I know, I'm going to be honest with you. I probably have like. You're like my wife. She literally has hundreds of friend requests, and I'm like. What? <laughs> I probably have like 200 yeah. from like two years ago, and right. I just haven't gone through. Gone all back. I need to. I was like, I just, on the show. I should probably send him a friend request. And then, like, no. wait a minute, he hadn't even accepted it. Yet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm caught in between of like, do I accept them all, or do I figure yeah, out yeah. if I, if I know? Filter them. through. Yeah. Like exactly. when I played, I was a little more careful because slackers. there's some weirdos oh, that yeah. may want to do something silly. But yeah. now it's yeah. like, yeah. All, right, yeah. all right, come get me. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, speaking of that. Sunday morning at like 9 a.m. is a real humbling time because your screen time thing pops up. It's like, hey, you've been on your, your phone for yeah. an average of this many times a day. You're up 25%. And you're like, right. oh, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. This week will yeah. be a little better. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the big thing for me, I don't, do y'all have social media on your phone? Yeah. I've, Kinda, I, I've, I've, I've deleted it before. Yeah. And then, I, and then I'm like, well, I'm going to go to it anyway. Yep. Uh, You're going to find a way so to So I get move there. up to like the back of it. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. But so I'm like, I just go straight to the back the of the habit. It. You get the habit of going there. But then I, I really want to delete it, but I'm afraid of not remembering my passwords and <laughs> yeah. like losing the account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I did hear somebody like they delete it every day. That way they have to like intentionally yeah, log in. Get it back on. Yep. Um, I've got the time restrictions. That's what I, I do. I do too. But, but it's I just, so easy to get through it. Would you like to ignore it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I do it every day. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I didn't. But. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, but I think what you do well and what I love to see is that you do make sure that I think a lot of people, and especially in the position that you'd been in with all the success you've had, is if your wife was taken off to go do whatever, it's like, oh, well, I'm too busy. to. You're taking the kids different places. You're invested in your son, doing a lot of different stuff. So, man, I think that that's a big deal. Yeah. Making that a priority. And yeah, you, you it's, have. It's hard. I mean, are y'all good with schedules or yeah, with, yeah. The, with yeah. the kids? Good. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I'm still do our trying. Best, yeah. You know, I'm juggling. But, uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's yeah. a struggle right now. But maybe I got to learn from y'all since no, well, I'm not in the business. I say that. We were literally just talking. I have a, a one month old. And like right now, mm. it's like we're, we're juggling of, hey, who's picking up? Who's dropping off? Right. We're not used to doing that. 
Mm-hmm. And then like you said, with sickness, my five-year-old had the flu this week. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, not going to the office, got to keep her away from the baby. So right. it's, it's all hands on deck. Well, yeah, and it, it never goes as planned or expected. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because of the business that we're in, we can set our schedule. So people believe that you can do anything at any time. Right. And so, man, like, you know, right before this, it, and this was, golly, I hope my in-laws don't watch this. And then, but <laughs> like really? right That's before this, I mean, I, their dog, their golden retriever died last night at 3.30. Oh. Brutal. Yeah. Right? Terrible. Yeah, whatever. Right. And, uh. My wife is like, my, my mom cannot, they, they got to bring him to the vet. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, son-in-law duties, here we come. Right. Call my buddy. I say, hey, time to roll, put the golden retriever in the car to bring to uh, uh, yeah. the vet. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, but I had some other things scheduled this morning. Yeah. But that took precedent at that moment. So no, yeah. we, we try, man, but yeah. don't always do it well. Yeah. Don't I'm still learning. Well, I'm so. not, definitely not a professional. No. It's got a lot to, for sure. A lot to improve on. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, wanted to ask you this a couple more before we get done. But, uh, you know, you traveled all over, played baseball everywhere. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know Covington, North Shore is home. But why do you think? I mean, because we talk about it all the time, man. Traffic's terrible. Roads are terrible. Maybe the education's not the best here, but it's home. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel like you and your wife make like Louisiana's just special? Why you choose Louisiana? Like, oh, traveling all the like i live in some great places i live yeah. on the west coast the northeast florida and i love them all but i don't know it's uh you know here's number one our helpers are here grandparents yeah, that's uh, huge you know <laughs> that's i could <laughs> uh my dad would lose it if, if my mom and dad would lose it if we ever moved away but right, uh right. With the, because of the grandkids not me yeah, yeah. Right. but uh yeah w- whenever i would travel it was just always something about, like i love where i was but there was something about Louisiana that I loved. And some people be like, like people who don't live here, they be like, really? Like, yeah, Louisiana? exactly. Like what? Uh, yeah. But I just love like, like when I was in El Paso, the West Coast, like I missed rain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Simple stuff. And I miss like green and yeah. swamp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it just, for me, it's LSU is a huge part of it. It's huge. Um, I love to hunt. I love to fish. Um, and it just has everything of, Yep. What I like to do, I mean, there's always an excuse to have a party, and uh, That's and, and, a fact, and, and where 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 That's we are, the North Shore, it, it's like it's it's a small yeah. community, and it's like a mixture of like a city, like you're close to New Orleans, right. close to Baton Rouge, but you still have like a a country feel, right. yeah. And there's a lot of places to go and have fun, so yeah, yeah. I mean, that's and that's we it. we have a lot, of, you know. I don't know many people that still have a good group of high school friends, but we got a good group there and and, cool. I, and we made a, a ton more have moved there. Yeah. So yeah, that's, cool. that's home. That's but, it. uh, yeah, but Turn I do think, I do think it's interesting though. Like I would love to live in Tennessee. Right. I just uh, don't have the courage to go and move to, to yeah. Tennessee permanently. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I did, but that's right. Yeah. It's like, I feel like you'll see more of that. Like, like Losing me it. and my friend were talking about that. It's like, why do we live in Louisiana? Like why, who's going to break the cycle of like the family's moving to Nashville? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, insurance is expensive. Like uh-huh. we flood, but uh, it's just <laughs> Here goes uh, another hurricane. Yeah, but it's the people. It's the party all the time. It's the people. It's you're not leaving the help. That's for sure. I'm with you no. on that, man. Mm-mm. Need the grandparents' help. Yeah, it's funny you say Nashville. My wife and I love to visit there, and every time we go, we're like, oh, how cool would it be to live in Nashville? Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's hard to explain to outsiders of hey, Louisiana is great because of this. They're like, all right, whatever. Sure. But I feel like every city you go to, there's people who don't like something about that city. So there's yeah. no perfect place. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. LSU's really close, a right? good hook for a lot of people that are yeah. like we'd always bring guys in from that live wherever, and yeah. like it's the greatest thing ever. And then when they go to a tailgate, yeah, they love it. It's unbelievable. It where then they, they go to New Orleans, Orleans and yeah, have a good time. Yeah. So yeah. love yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's a good. Special. I mean, I, Louisiana's yeah. home. It, it really has everything. It has water, it has hunting, it has Mardi Gras, LSU, uh, all the sports. You have the best beach beaches in America, Destin, yeah. four hours yep. away. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, it's got everything that I want yeah. besides maybe mountains and snow. Yeah. 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 But you can go visit that. A little colder climate. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so go a little bit deeper. Last question we have for you. Um, and you've kind of touched on this a little bit. Yeah. Granted, we're we're young, so we're not old and wise, and have all of these like words of wisdom for people. But you know, we've lived a little bit. We got some some stuff under our belt. What's something? What's one life lesson that you feel that you will pass on to your kids, or if someone's listening that maybe on the same trajectory as you, or even in that transi- transition part, what's like a life lesson or a word of encouragement 
you would give them? I think probably, I mean, it, what's important to me right now is what we talked about, mm -hmm. trying to get an identity outside of what you do and like really know yourself. Yeah. Um, and just have a, know yourself, have an identity yeah. and don't lose that, but know like, hey, I'm a great baseball player right. or, or this is what I do. Like, it's my job. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I, and I, I, my advice is just, like you said, off of experiences, stuff that I wish I was better at or did wrong. Um, I, I encourage people like my kids really to yeah. like figure it out. And it's cause good. I was not a good, um, probably because of sports like it's instant gratification right so you kind of fall in the trap of like you want something now yeah. so it's like in school it's like hey i don't know this like just tell me the answer like <laughs> what is it yeah. like yeah instead of having to go actually find the answer or, or solve the problem right um or fix this or whatever so you know i really take the time to like do it yourself and and fail like don't i just like to get my kids to figure something out. Like and my that. daughter is like, just, Huge. just like me. So yeah. that's a struggle. I'm like, <laughs> good yeah. and bad thing. Pulling my hair up because she's the same way. She's like, yeah. I want to answer. I like gets frustrated, uh -huh. but my son's like the total opposite. Like my son's like my, he's better than me. Like at, already at six, like he's very, it's mm. funny how your kids can do that to uh, you. Like, he, man, I kind of wish I had that attitude about things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess it. that's my, how my wife was, but like, yeah. he's very smart and like, he can think through stuff at, like slow pace and like, like just trying to solve right. something. I'm like, come on. Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, like try to figure it out. Fail. It's big. I mean, failing's big. And, big. and yeah. like, I, you have to fail. Like I encourage it, and it because it makes everything so much better. It's yeah. Right. And everything, it's such cliche, but it's, it's true. It's like sports like kept me, it just feeds the beast yes. because like if you were, great at something like you get bored with it that's right so for sure i would say fail um you know find your identity and and really just like try to figure something out and be resourceful which i you know i i, I wish there were things out that I, I i thought i wish i thought about that when i was a lot younger and and in my career yeah and kind of have a game plan too of after you know yeah. from an athletic standpoint yeah. like yeah what's the, what's the end goal after you're done not right. just to get a big contract but like whether you do or you don't, like, what, you, what are you going to do with it after? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a short period of time. So I think that's the message is that, like, you know, obviously experience is a great teacher. And so you're, you, you know, you, you're talking from your experiences. But, you know, it's it's easy today. You can't figure something out. We'll just YouTube it or Google mm -hmm. it. It's like, no, the best way to learn it is you don't do it right the first time. Keep doing right. it. Keep doing it. So that's big. It's yeah. good stuff. It's yeah, good I get stuff. in trouble with my underwriter all the time. Or my we have a little like a scenario underwriter. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just like call her right away. Be like, hey, what about she like, what did you did you read the guidelines? I'm like, no, just tell no, me the just answer. Tell like, me what it is, please. Say go read them. I'm like, so you you just give me the <laughs> answer. <laughs> That's like, you're, the you're not gonna learn anything. I'm like, all right, <laughs> mom. Like, Thanks a lot. Come on. Thanks a lot. So That's, awesome. That's good, man. Yeah. Well, look, we'll finish up with some lighthearted stuff. These surprise go you for all. It. So number one, I was thinking about this, especially with Alice, LSU in Florida tomorrow night. It'll be a fun thing to watch. If you had to sit down and you're watching one sporting event. I know you said you're a football fan. You love mm -hmm. football. Would you choose watching college football, college baseball, or professional? Let's go professional baseball. Only choose one. You sit down, you and your son, you're going to watch one. What you going to watch? LSU. Who's LSU playing? Football. <laughs> who's, who are we playing? Let's say it's all a big series. Like if it's an LSU, all it's an LSU Alabama game. It's a, you know, who was y'all's biggest rival, you think, college baseball-wise? Uh I mean, nobody was. There's really a couple. Right, I'm trying right. to like old. That, that was Ole Miss, Arkansas, Arkansas. Old, Ole Miss, man, huh? Ole Miss. Ole Miss, Arkansas is good. Yeah. yeah. So one of those. It's it's yeah. a top tier matchup. Mm -hmm. So we got LSU football, LSU baseball, or, or, a or a big you know, league, biggest professional game you'd watch. Hmm. I like watching. I, I love. I love LSU football. I like especially if it's a. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, we're we're both really good. Right. I love that. Kind of gets yeah. me going. But I love, I love watching Major League Baseball. Really, that's it. Just because huh? it's 
you know, it's 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 at a more advanced level, and yeah, it's everybody. You know, that was pro. what I did for so long, and I'm I'm very cerebral about like you can appreciate it on a whole nother. Yeah, level. I just I I yeah. I, crit- I like dissect it yeah. more. Like I don't care who wins. Sure, I want to see like a great game and like pick it apart. Yeah, I like it. I can't pick football apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I would say I would say major league baseball. Yeah. yeah, it's a work of art for you to kind of examine. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, I like that. I like that. All right, so I'm going to give you a little chance to flex here. <laughs> who Who would you say is the most famous person in your contacts list on your phone? Um, famous is a relative word. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Broad, like people. Okay, yeah, people know them. Probably Mark McGuire. Nice. That's a big one, That's dude. A um, That's yeah. a big one. I would say McGuire. That yeah, was could, prime baseball days, watching him and oh, Sammy yeah, Sosa yeah. go back to back. That yeah, because he was – so he was my bench coach in San Diego. Okay. That's cool. And uh, and I was like, Mark McGuire? Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. And so we got to – we just hit it off. I mean, I was – I think he liked the – we just clicked. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, I mean, That's the coolest cool. thing for me was we got to do the uh, – I don't know if you remember when he was doing the home run chase. Uh-huh. He came, he'd hit a home run and they'd come and yeah, smash, he'd always, like, yeah. smash forums and punch you in the gut. Yeah. And so we're playing in St. Louis and I was kind of, that's when I hit my stride and um, I was like, hey, Big Mac, like I was hitting second. I was like, hey, when I come back, hit this home run, remember what you used to do? Let's do it. When you hit home runs? Yeah. I was like, we're doing it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> cool kid. <laughs> and so sure enough, and I didn't even think, I, I said it and then I sure. forgot about it. Yeah. And then I kid you not, Homer, yeah, second at bat of the game, I'm running around the bases, and I look at the top step, and he's like, "Let's go!" <laughs> I'm like, "What's gonna happen?" Like, oh my god, dude. it's really happening! <laughs> that is yeah, cool. Yeah, then he man. knocks the breath out of me and gut punches <laughs> yeah. me, and then we did. <laughs> I've been waiting my whole life to do that, yeah. and then we and then we did that every home run I did it dude, uh, with him. So he was my. Story. That's my guy, man. I, I I had a life size poster in my yeah. room when I was a kid. Up, that's man. a great story. Love I did too, man. And so, like, to think about him just being a down to earth mm-hmm. chill guy, that's really cool to hear. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, those are pretty lighthearted. Easy. We didn't take too hard on you, but I appreciate you sharing all that, man. Yeah. Uh, It was great to have you on. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, like I said, initially when we started this, getting to meet you and I'm like, man, I, you know, watch you play ball and all this different stuff and now do business together. I uh, appreciate you just being authentic and real with us here. Yeah, it's great, this man. is great, guys. I appreciate it. You'll do a good job. Man, sure. we're, we're honored to have you. Uh, when Brandon said, hey, I think we got a chance to get Ryan, I was like, yes, easy yes. So <laughs> yeah. glad uh, glad you could join us. Give us your time. Uh, if you are here watching, and of course, we want to give uh, give him a shout out. He is in the lending business. So give him some, give him some deals there yeah. and uh, help him out. Uh, but we're honored to have him, honored to have his time, his value. I hope you got some value out of it too, just being able to dissect a little bit. Uh, feel free to follow us. We're going to give him a shout out and you know plug his information and you can reach out to him. But Don't worry about Facebook friend requests. Don't, don't send him a friend request. <laughs> I'll go through him, I swear. I got to go down. Uh, but yeah, so thanks so much for watching and we will catch you next time.